So up next is pigments. And which of those are associated with which colors? Um, which is always really exciting. Uh, one thing to note about this is this is highly dependent on the visible light spectrum. Um, and the way these work is pigments can absorb certain spectrums of light, um, wavelengths. And wavelengths come in different, like the colors each have their own band of wavelengths. Um, so with pigments, they can absorb certain light frequencies, but once they can't absorb, they're just going to reflect. So that's why you see certain colors. The colors you see are what cannot be absorbed. If it absorbed every color, you would see black. Plants would be black. <coughs> Somebody told me earlier that that was weird, but really, if you think about it, if plants absorbed all light, green plants would be weird. We would think black was the norm. So, um, so that being said, keeping keeping that in mind for with the absorption and reflection, chlorophyll reflects green light. Therefore, we associate it with the color green, chloro green. Um, Carotenoids are yellow and orange. They can absorb green, so that's why they don't show us green. Um, way you can remember carotenoids, I think it looks like carrots, and carrots are orange. So carotenoids, yellow and orange. Um, but they can absorb yellow or orange light, so therefore they reflect that back at us, and that's why we see yellow and orange. And the last ones are anthocyanins. And anthocyanins are your reds. Um, so, basically, what this has to do with plants, uh, for the most part, what we see are green leaves and stuff. But when you think about it when it comes to fall, that chlorophyll is going to start to die out, basically. And the carotenoids are going to take over. And I'm going to give you a quick visual demonstration of how this works using some objects I happen to have handy like a pen, a butter knife, and my marker. So, for all extensive purposes, we are going to say that the butter knife is the chlorophyll, partially because it has a green handle. So, my butter knife is chlorophyll. Sitting right next to it and just buddying on up are the carotenoids, and they will be signified by my black pen. Say hello. And they are sitting right next to you. And attached to all of that is your anthocyanins and the random other colors that are just thrown in there. And they're all sitting together. So about fall, this guy kind of dies off and basically um, just stops his work. Well, then this guy's going to kick in and take over. And it can absorb green light. So therefore, what we're looking at now is it can't absorb orange or yellow light. So therefore, the leaves start to change colors and we start to see some yellow and orange on our leaves. It causes the really pretty fall colors. Well, eventually, these guys run out. And then all we're left is our anthocyanins. And they reflect red light. So therefore, that's when our leaves start turning really red. And when these guys die, that's when we have brown leaves and all the leaves fall off. So... That was a very silly demonstration of that, but maybe you'll remember it. That being said, <coughs> chlorophyll green, carotenoids yellow and orange, and anthocyanins are reds. And that just has to do with the light spectrum and absorption and reflection. Chlorophyll can absorb anything but green, therefore we see green. Carotenoids can absorb anything but yellow and orange, therefore we see yellow or orange. And anthocyanins can absorb anything but red, so we see red. So that's how that works. Um, embryophyta is up next, and the two groups of embryophyta. reason we call it embryophyta, and we'll go into this in more detail in lab after fall break. Uh, by the way, when you come back from fall break, there is no lab that week, so enjoy your days off. Um... I'm going to try to myself. Um, but that being said, embryophyta, the reason it comes from is starting 
with embryophytes, you have this embryonic life stage um, that we didn't see in any plants before this, and that's what separates these guys, and they're also terrestrial. There's other stuff that they do, but the reason they got the name embryophyte is because they have an embryo they have an embryonic stage to their life cycles. So, two groups of embryophyta are the bryophytes and the tracheophytes. So, bryophytes are your non-vascular plants, and tracheophytes are your vascular plants. Um, easy way to remember this is you have a trachea, and you use your trachea to breathe. Breathing is part of the vascular system, so tracheophytes, vascular plants. Non-vascular bryophytes, vascular tracheophytes. Um. <coughs> so, what are in your bryophytes? Your bryophytes are like your mosses, your liverworts, your hornworts, and your hogworts. Just kidding. That last one is not real. Um, we write J.K. Rowling. I take that back. But your bryophytes are your mosses, your liverworts, and your hornworts. And tracheophytes are everything else, starting with ferns and moving on up to all your flowering plants. And they are vascular. So, here's that. Uh, the last thing I'm going to go over because table 15.2 you can look at on your own and the terms I've pretty much covered most of them and if not there's a dictionary in the back of your book or there's Google. Google is a lovely tool when you can't understand what your book is telling you. Um, so the last one is the hepatophyta reproduction. Um, and hepatophyta are your liverworts. Hepato meaning liver, phyta meaning plant, liverworts. So, one thing you should know, from here on out, your life cycles are pretty much going to all be sporic with embryophyta. Um, but with this, what you're looking at is sporic life cycle. You do have two stages of life. There's the gametophyte stage and the sporophyte stage. One of these stages is, do is dominant, meaning it's self-sustaining and can live on its own, and it don't need no man to keep it strong and whatnot. Um, it's a strong, independent plant who don't need no man. Um, and one of them will be not dominant, won't call it recessive because that's genetics, but it won't be dominant, and basically it'll be sort of codependent, so it will need everybody to do their part for it to live. So, um, with hepatophyta, its dominant stage in life is the gametophyte stage. Um, the gametophyte stage is the haploid stage. So everything, <coughs> everything that you see when you look at a liverwort is gametophyte. Uh, you can see the sporophyte when they develop, but uh, you have to look and it has to be a certain time of year. Um, so, I'm not really sure how much y'all needed to know about that, but there's a lovely life cycle diagram in your book, and basically, um, you need to know it's the sporic life cycle, and the gametophyte is the dominant stage, and any additional questions you can leave in the comment box, you know, down below this thing. Or you can email me directly, or you can just send me an email to my YouTube account. So, um, which would probably be easier. So, I hope that this video has been helpful and that you learned a lot. Or, not necessarily that you learned a lot, but that you were able to review what you already knew. If you have any additional questions, again, you can leave them in the comment box below. And um, that's all I got. Once again, I'm Brittany. And if you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact me in any way. Um, I check my email so often that it's probably not healthy. So, 
signing off. Enjoy your night and good luck with your exam.